part of Rimini, in the part of uh, the, 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 the near the, close to the sea, is not very far from the weather in, uh, in the lower part, in the southern part of Friuli, in uh, Venice, uh, in, the, in the part of uh, Veneto on the sea, for example. In the other part of Romania, uh, the, we, we can uh, find a lot of hills. The more higher, uh, the more you go to the south. So, uh, for example, you can start uh, close to the VME at 200 meters on the sea level and to uh, reach 500 and more uh, meters on the sea level uh, as altitude. And the vineyards are in, the, in this part of the, of the, of the region uh, mainly. There is also uh, vineyards in, uh, in the northern part, in the flatlands, but uh, they in, in this part, they produce mainly the, the white varieties. In the part of the south of Romagna and the east south of Romagna, the, they produce mainly the Sangiovese. And uh, this is uh, some idea to, uh, to give uh, the, the situation, uh, the geographic and uh, climatic situation of this uh, sub-region eh? from the sea to the hills from the from the, the north uh, to, to to the south it's it's strange for uh, for us in italy to imagine uh, then the then the mountains high mountains are on the south or uh, in, in the in our uh, um, in the, uh, on the south of, of of the of the region because normally uh, we have the alps that are on the north of course no and the Tuscany or the Marche or uh, Umbria itself as the, the, the mountains or the east or on the north. Uh, Romagna as on the south. So like, like Lange, eh? the Lange in, in Piedmont is in the, in the similar situation because the, the mountains are on the south. Eh? So um, I was a professor of geography when I, in, in my previous life. And, uh, and so I, I know very well the situation. <laughs> of uh, geographic situation of uh, each Italian regions, not only the, the Italian region, but mainly, of course, the Italian region. So uh, this is Romagna. Romagna produces uh, uh, many wines, of course, and uh, a good quantity of wine. You imagine that we have uh, about more than 6,000 sectors, 6,000 and something. And uh, it's uh, the double of Montalcino and of Barolo, and uh, two thirds of Chianti Classico, for example. And uh, if you uh, look at the map, the, the, the region is not so big. So uh, the, the viticulture activity is uh, one of the most important uh, um, activity of the uh, uh, Romagna agriculture. So, uh, and imagine that in some little part of Romagna, they produce olive oil. It is very strange for a, a northern region. In Brisighella, for example, they produce a fantastic olive oil. Uh, it's one of the few regions on the north of uh, Apennines Mountains in which you can produce olive oil. Also in other part of Romagna now, uh, they produce olive oils, but Brisighella probably is the part of more, more famous part of uh, of, of uh, Romagna, uh, of olive oil uh, in Romagna. Visigella is a fantastic town, and uh, there are many medieval little towns in Romagna, completely unknown. And uh, when uh, will be possible, uh, uh, please come to visit the Romagna because it's a real surprise. Uh, it's uh, a, a incredible. We probably have the idea of, uh, of Rimini, that is a great beach, uh, seaside, uh, and uh, for, for, uh, for the, the sea holidays, you know, like Miami Beach or something like that. But uh, there are many other parts of Romagna. Uh, in the south, there is the, the, the rock of San Marino, for example, that is a little republic, independent, very ancient. And uh, there is uh, San Leo uh, that is now in Romagna, uh, and uh, there is another, another important rock, and there is Modigliana, there is Brisighella, there is Predapio, a lot of little fantastic medieval towns that has to be visited because uh, they are very interesting, historically speaking, and, uh, and for the landscape and for the country, it is uh, a, a little wild wilder than Tuscany, but uh, very fascinating. Eh? 
so uh, I, I talk a lot about uh, history and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, geography. Probably we can uh, we can start to uh, to introduce some wines and some and some producers huh? uh, because uh, uh, it's time to to do that. Uh, the first wine is not a Sangiovese. The first wine I have uh, in uh, in my in my selection, in my flight, is uh, a Spartan wine. Is this? It is uh, Bollet. Bollet. It's a, a a wine from two great cooperatives that uh, put together to make a Spartan wines from Trebbiano Romagnolo and a little bit of uh, a local native uh, varieties variety that is the famoso, the famous, and is a, a white variety uh, uh, that, that you can find in some part of uh, the uh, eastern uh, Romagna, and they call it famoso, the famoso uh, the grapes. Uh, and um, it's a, a Trebbiano uh, uh, produced by uh, Caviro and Terrecevico, that are very big uh, cooperative sellers, and is the answer of the Romagna to the Prosecco, for example. Uh, why? Uh, because the Trebbiano, uh, with the Trebbiano, you can produce also a sparkling wine. It's very eclectic variety. So uh, you can have a, a, a normal wines, white wine, not sparkling, a sparkling wine, of course. And uh, uh, it's possible to put also the Trebbiano in, in wood sometimes, or not and uh, and to make a, a fresh and crispy uh, white wines, but it's possible to uh, make also a sparkling. This is a couve close, in French. It's uh, a method charmant, or a method italiano, I say, because uh, probably uh, was uh, uh, invented in Italy before then in France. Uh, and uh, is the, the same uh, system in which uh, is, uh, they, they produce the Prosecco, for example, no? in Conegliano, Valdobbiadene, but not, not only nowadays. The Bolle, the, the name is Bolle, is a Romagna Spumante DOC, about 90% Trebbiano Romagnolo and uh, about 10% more or less famoso. And uh, I put in my glass now and uh, let's taste. Don't expect a, a, a big champagne, or don't expect a big, a big uh, uh, Francia Corta. It's a simply quite crispy and drinkable wines, not expensive. And this is very important because uh, in this moment, probably to, to, to have good wines and not expensive is important. The color is a light yellow, of course, the nose uh, is a very uh, uh, easty uh, mm. nose uh, because the easts uh, are present uh, with the fruit of uh, Trebbiano, that is uh, uh, probably a yellow plum uh, and uh, something like that. We can uh, uh, we can make a toast with this wine to introduce other wines, but. It's very crispy and pleasant, in my opinion. And uh, it's not a, a big Spartan wine, it's uh, drinkable. So it's uh, too aperitive to, uh, to be um, compared with or matched with, uh, with the, the fried vegetables, for example, or fried fish, something like that. And uh, uh, it's uh, uh, a, a new uh, release of, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, this uh, very important cooperative seller, very big cooperative seller. Caviro is one of the most important cooperative uh, seller of, uh, of Romagna and Terrecevico is uh, uh, smaller, but not so smaller than, uh, than, uh, than Caviro. So two big companies that put together to make these, uh, these uh, uh, crispy and pleasant wines, simply and pleasant wines, that is Bolle. Bolle comes from uh, bubbles, bolle in, uh, in Italian. And uh, Bollet is uh, the name uh, the, in dialect in which uh, probably they call the Bolle, so Bolle. And uh, um, let you uh, um, remember the, 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 the fact that it is a, a sparkling wine, so full of bubbles. Yeah? 
So, uh, and let's uh, uh, get into the world of Sangiovese, of Romagna Sangiovese. And uh, the first wine is from Podere Morini. Podere Morini is, uh, the name is Morale, uh, and it's a 2019 Sangiovese, Romagna Sangiovese, Oriolo. What is Oriolo? Oriolo is a, a sub-denomination uh, of, uh, of the San, uh, Romagna Sangiovese. The Sangiovese is different. Uh, in, uh, in Langa, they, they call that uh, MGI, the MGI, the, the geographic mentions. And uh, uh, the Romagna Sangiovese has many geographic mentions. In the south, you have the mentions of the higher vineyards. So Brisighella and uh, um, Predappio and Modigliana, uh, especially, they are in altitude uh, mainly. Uh, the other part, and Oriolo is one of them, is uh, near the, the city of Faenza. And uh, there is a part in which the uh, sandy soils are very, very common. And uh, uh, the, the name is Sangiovese de i Sabioni, for example, or dei Sabioni, because the, 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 the soil is more sandy than the other part. Uh, wine by wine, then we, we can comment uh, some technique um, news, uh, because, uh, uh, and this is one of the uh, easier, probably, Sangiovese, Romagna Sangiovese, is uh, in 2019, is um, only in, in, in steel, so no wood in this wine. Uh, the color is not uh, uh, very, very deep. It's uh, uh, the, the common color for a, for a Sangiovese 2019. It was a good vintage for, uh, for the Romagna. For Italy, in, in uh, all, it was a good vintage, but in Romagna is a good vintage 2019. Uh, of course, uh, uh, on the market, uh, you can find only the uh, easier wine uh, from 2019, because they are young. Huh? Um, the nose is fruity, uh, is uh, the, the, fruit, the, the, the nose of the uh, classic and the typical nose of the of a Sangiovese, very fruity. The uh, acidity, you can feel some acidity, but you can feel easily also the tannins and the body of this wine. We are in the in the lower part of uh, of Romagna. We are in the hills of uh, uh, around uh, Faenza, but they are not very high hills, uh, uh, and uh, and the soil is a sandy soil. So imagine these kind of wines is uh, not a, a, an edgy wine. Is a wine uh, easy to drink. Uh, is a wine that you can uh, put with some uh, I don't know grilled steak, for example, or with some uh, recipe from Romagna, from uh, the, the lasagne or uh, 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 from Romagna too, not only for, from Emilia, uh, mainly from Romagna, uh, in fact. And this kind of gastronomy is uh, typical to match these kind of wines. So if you go to Romagna, uh, remember to put these Sangiovese uh, from Oriolo and from the lower part of the um, viticultural area uh, with some uh, simply food like grilled steak, for example. Uh, in New York City with a, a big hamburger in Gallagher's, no? <laughs> could be a, a fantastic match. And uh, Podere Morini is uh, a fantastic uh, a, a fantastic seller, of course. Uh, Podere Morini uh, is very uh, traditional, but uh, uh, Podere Morini is also one of the name, uh, the more important name uh, of the uh, produ produce, uh, producing of, uh, of uh, uh, Sangiovese di Romagna. Morini it's, uh, uh, is in, uh, uh, eccolo qua, is uh, in Faenza, well, uh, there is one of the main cities of Romagna. They produce uh, about uh, 100,000 bottles uh, on uh, 25 hectares. And uh, uh, they are in San Biagio, that is uh, a, little, uh, a little part of the, the, the area of Faenza. 
and uh, they exist from 1998. So it's not so old as a, as a cellar, but it's very interesting because, uh, because they produce wine like that, not only these wine uh, so sim simple, uh, also some more important wines, but this is, uh, uh, I know, one of the more typical wines of the area of uh, Faenza. So uh, this is uh, uh, very important to collocate this kind of wines, this kind of wine. The second wine is from another part, is from Bissoni. They are in Bertinoro, and Bertinoro, uh, of course, is in, in another part. It's very famous for the Albana Bertinoro, but also for, for the, uh, for the uh, Sangiovese. This is a Sangiovese Superiore Riserva. There is a pyramid of the production of Romagna Sangiovese. On the base, there is the, the Romagna Sangiovese and some Romagna Sangiovese not reserved. Uh, then there is a Sangiovese Superiore, is in the middle of the pyramid, Sangiovese Superiore Riserva, and at the, on the top there is the uh, Sangiovese uh, Superiore MGA, so the, the, uh, the sub-denomination, that is not sub-denomination, is uh, over-denomination, is better, like, like a super-denomination, uh, that, that comes from uh, different uh, sub-region of the, the, the part of Romagna. Um, um, so uh, this is a Sangiovese Superiore, it's like Bordeaux Superiore, like the, the, we, we have a, a, some uh, similitudes with uh, other international denomination. Superior in, in Italy means uh, uh, less production in, in vineyards normally and uh, uh, more uh, aging and uh, a, an alcohol contains a little uh, superior. So uh, this is uh, the, the, in, in all the it, Italian denomination, when you uh, read superior on, uh, on, on the denomination uh, means uh, this, less production, uh, by hectares, uh, a little more aging the wines and a little more full bodied and probably aged in wood. And in this case, uh, in this case, uh, there is uh, uh, aging in, uh, in wood. So uh, we can uh, be Sony Reserva, of course. It is uh, Sangiovese Superiore Reserva 2016. That is a fantastic, fantastic vine. Um, uh, fantastic uh, uh, vintage, excuse me. The color is deeper than the first, huh? than the previous, uh, because of the aging of oak, of course, but because also uh, of the uh, aging in wood, probably. The nose is uh, a spicy nose more than the, than, uh, than the first. It's a, a, a different uh, wine of course, uh, different uh, because of the body, because of the complexity, because it has to be that, because it's Sangiovese Superiore di Serva, it's not only a, San, a normal Sangiovese, so uh, this is important to, to collocate again the wine. So uh, the spicy scents and uh, the red fruit scents, of course, uh, plum, uh, red plum, but also some uh, berries, uh, um, raspberries probably, that is very common in, uh, in some Sangiovese of Romagna. The tannins are more evident than the acidity because we are in Bertinoro and uh, Bertinoro has character in this way. So um, later we, we, we will taste uh, a wine with a different relationships between tannins and acidity because it comes from higher vineyards and from different uh, subregions. And uh, this is important to, to, to know. Uh, this is a, a, like a, a, a super Sangiovese, in fact, uh, uh, complex, uh, spicy, uh, with a, a, probably an international character, international tax, to be uh, understood uh, by a lot of people, probably, and uh, to, to match with uh, big recipes, big, big food, uh, so roasted beef, uh, not, not only grilled, and uh, uh, cooked for a long time. 
and uh, this is the, the, the possible, but uh, the Sangiovese is uh, eclectic enough to, to, to have uh, also some gypsy matching. <laughs> so, but the, 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 the spicy scents are very evident in this wine and it's a very interesting. Bissoni is another important, important uh, um, um, seller. Um, they declare that uh, they put 18 months in the French oak barrels. So the, the, the spicy character comes also from the aging in, uh, in French oak barrels, of course. Huh? And the, probably the, the international touch of this wine is, uh, is uh, uh, due also to the aging system. Uh, uh, very different from the previous, isn't it? No? Very different. The third wine is another universe. Is another universe is uh, Tenuta Piccolo Brunelli. Piccolo Brunelli is Pietro Piccolo Brunelli. That is a, a family name, nothing to do with the Brunello. Huh? Uh, and the Piccolo Brunelli is the name of the family that owns this, uh, this um, particular uh, cellar in, uh, in uh, Predapio. Predapio is uh, in, on the south of the denomination, uh, central uh, and southern part of the, of the Romagna Sangiovese. The hills are higher, uh, the, the uh, landscape is completely different. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a, a so-called natural wine because uh, why so called? Because uh, natural wine is uh, another universe. Uh, they don't have any uh, added yeasts, uh, only, uh, only um, uh, spontaneous fermentation. And uh, they put the wine not in, uh, in French oak barrels, but in concrete. Uh, and, uh, and the wine is completely different. Uh, the color is completely different, is less, is lighter. And uh, the nose is a nose that remember you probably the, the, uh, the red orange, not the, the not spicy uh, and um, the, the, the very, uh, I don't know, uh, essential in the nose. Uh, very clean, but very essential. And uh, the, uh, the character of the Sangiovese is very clear. This is uh, the uh, Cesco Romagna Sangiovese Predapio 2018. I put this uh, after Bisoni, that is 2016, so older, be because of the acidity. Try to taste, and you have another, another uh, balance. Uh, with, uh, the acidity wins on, uh, on the tannins. And uh, this is a, a different character and a different origin. Also, of course, a different winemaking and uh, a great respect for the nature. And this is very important because uh, the, the Tenuta Piccolo Brunelli is one of the biologic, uh, uh, organic cellar, the more one, one of the more important experience of organic winemaking and wine growing in, uh, in Romagna. So we can taste now. We have, uh, we have the, the, the owners of Poderi Morini, the owners of uh, Pier, Piccolo Brunelli connected. So if they want uh, to, to comment, uh, they just ask uh, to, to comment the wines. The relationships between acidity and tannins is completely different. The acidity is very evident, is uh, um, a crispy wines, uh, it's very nice to, to drink, it's not so big in, uh, in the, of course you can feel some tannins because it's a Sangiovese, but the acidity is completely different. And the relationships between acidity and tannins is very different. Uh, the origin is different and the soil is different uh, and uh, the, the weather is different. The, the, the maturing uh, of the, uh, the, of the, the ripening of the of the of the grapes is different, of course, and uh, uh, this is uh, sometimes there are some so-called natural wine that are not very good, very precise in uh, in wine making, and this is the contrary. This is very precise in wine making, and uh, and this is um, a, a surprise, really, uh, because uh, uh, represents uh, a, a, an origin in. Uh, precise way, in my opinion. And uh, 
and this is one of the most uh, uh, the nicest uh, uh, Romagna Sangiovese from Predapio. Uh. Unfortunately, Predapio is very famous for uh, to 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 give the 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 the, the birth to uh, Benito Mussolini, you know, and uh, but uh, it's not a, a, a responsibility of the, the the people of Predapio, of course. <laughs> And <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, you have to uh, you have to uh, activate the the the, the microphone. The microphone. Okay. Hello, Pietro Piccolo Brunelli. Hello, nice to meet you. Hello, hello everybody. Uh, if it's possible, I, I would like to to show you uh, on the map where yeah. the state is because um, it's very uh, it's very uh, important to understand. Where uh, where we are on the map? Okay, yes. I, I have the map too. Okay. Yes, I, I have a map too. Okay, okay. No. If you if you see this this area, this is the we have uh, um, uh, Bologna over here. Okay, and Rimini is over here to the south. Okay, this is the Via Emilia. Yes. Okay, this is the Via Emilia. Okay, so as you can see. The 80% of the vineyards in the area are in these stripes. Okay, next to close, very close to the Via Emilia. Okay, we are here in the very south, uh, southwest uh, part of uh, of uh, Romagna of Predapio. In, in the middle of the hills. Exactly. Exactly. In the middle Just... of the hills, at 500 meters on the sea level, more or less 400, 500. 400, 400. 400. This, is, this is very, very important to understand the the, the, the time of uh, the type of wine that we that we produce. But it's very evident from the character of the wine that is very different from uh, from others uh, Sangiovese di Romagna for the reason you you told us. So uh, it's um, it's very uh, uh, essential and uh, and uh, demonstrate that uh, Romania is not a, a single region, it's not a big region, but uh, there are many differences uh, because the hills, because the soil, uh, because all of these reasons. Uh, and uh, my compliments, it's very nice as well. Grazie. Le, go on, let's go on, and uh, we have uh, uh, another big important wines that is uh, uh, the Orione, that is a uh, Sangiovese uh, Superiore uh, 2017 by Santini, Tenuta Santini, that is... Uh, uh, hello, hello, uh, everybody. Uh, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, if, if the owner of Podere Morini wants to say something uh, of Podere, Podere Morini, it's, uh, it's uh, of course, you can collect after, after, uh, after Mr. Santini, and uh, Santini is in, in another part of, uh, of Romagna, of course, no? The, yes, we it's, are in the, in, the, a, in the south of Romagna. Yes. Very, very close to the sea, about uh, 10 kilometers from the sea. Yes. Uh, very close to Rimini on, uh, on Adriatic Sea. We are so about- you feel uh, the Mediterranean weather, no? Uh, yes. uh, Brunelli, Piccolo Brunelli, uh, fe felt the continental weather and the hilly uh, weather. You feel the sea. Uh, we, you are very close to the sea. Yes. Uh, and, and the wine is very different because the color, of course, the, the wine making is different because you put the wine in uh, French oak barrels, if I remember right. And you have a, a very famous winemaker that uh, is a, your wine consultant, that is Lorenzo Landi. Lorenzo Landi, yes. Yes. Uh, so, uh, and the, the, the character of the wines, not only for the winemaking, but for the origin, is very different. Uh, so, we, we can comment that the, the nose is uh, spicy and fruity, is deeply uh, fruity, this wine. So, the, the, the red plum is very evident. And some touch of spices, of, of course, in in the nose. Probably some uh, black cherries uh, macerated in alcohol, no, the, the kirsch liquor, um, something like that. And of course, the relation be between tannins, alcohol, and uh, acidity is uh, um, different because the alcoholic contains and the tannic contains is more evident than the, in the wine of uh, Pietro Piccolo Brunelli, of course. 
And it's not only a problem of winemaking, it's a problem of origin, especially, in my opinion, of course. Because the, 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 the vineyards are in so different situation, and the, and the Sangiovese gives us a different characters. It's very easy to understand. It's not easy to demonstrate, but it's easy to understand because, uh, of course, every good wine comes from an origin. And uh, if you go in every great uh, wine region, you have the same, uh, the same situation. If you go to Volnay, uh, the wine of Volnay are different from a wine of Chevrolet Chambertin. The wine of, uh, it is not only a problem of uh, wine making or grapes uh, uh, in, in some part of the world. No? If you go in, uh, in America to Santa Elena, it's different from Russian River. No? <laughs> Very different because the situation is different, of course. And uh, the big, the, the strongness uh, the, the, of, uh, of Santa Elena and the, the, the elegance of Russian River. And we have the elegance of uh, the higher part of, uh, of the Romagna mm -hmm. and, and uh, the body of, uh, of Santini, of Orione, Sangiovese Superiore. And, uh, uh, and this uh, 2017, so comes from a, a, a big vintage, a, a, a hot vintage. So it's another reason for what this wine is so full bodied, huh? because it's a big wine, uh, the alcohol is, is evident. But also in 2016, also in 2018, the fresher vintage, probably the expression is not so far because the origin is, uh, is that. So uh, you, you can have a little uh, uh, differences, of course, but not so deep, not so um, dramatic uh, differences. No? And uh, this is a wine from this part of Romania. So Romania is not, only if you say Romagna Sangiovese, you say few. Um, uh, it's not so impressive. Uh, if you say Romagna Sangiovese Predapio or Romagna Sangiovese Colli di Rimini or Colli di Imola, that is in, uh, in the uh, western part of, of Romagna, is completely different. No? Uh, you can divide, share the, 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 the Romagna in the uh, flat part, the, the flatland part, and the hilly part. Sangiovese is mainly in the hill part, but uh, the more you go to the south, the more the hills are um, higher and higher. So in the, in, the, in the southern part of Romania, you can have vineyards at 400 meters on the sea level. That is a lot for uh, the Sangiovese. It's like Radda in, in, uh, in Chianti Classico, eh? if you want to compare the, the, the situation. Eh? So uh, Piccolo Brunelli is like uh, the, the producer of Rad and Chianti for the Chianti Classico or, uh, and, uh, and uh, Orione Sangiovese is like a, a producer of Castelnuovo Berardenga. Uh, in every, in every uh, denomination, in every wine area, you can have different uh, situation and different character of the wines. There is not a true in, uh, in, in this. There is uh, the respect of the origin this is very, very important to, un to, to understand. And in these, uh, the, the differences between these two wines and the difference with, with Bissoni or Podere Morini uh, demonstrate that Romagna is not a, 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 like, like a monolith, no? but uh, it's uh, declinated in, in different characters, like a, a, an important and noble wine region. So we, we probably we have to uh, consider that and, uh, and uh, consider this, uh, this kind of situation. In, in so little region, you have a lot of differences. And the Sangiovese can exprime itself in different way. Uh, this means the, the, the value, the, 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 the quality uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a wine region. And probably we, uh, I don't know, we don't know enough the, the, uh, the wines from Romania. And this is the, uh, examples of that. Uh, the last wine is uh, uh, completely different because it comes from uh, Imola. So the, the, the western part of Romania, not far from the Sillero River, uh, Imola. And uh, Imola is one of the uh, more Western little town. It's not so little, but uh, it's, uh, it's a little town for, 
for the idea that in America you have uh, as a town is a little medieval town uh, and uh, uh, very very nice. Uh, uh, and uh, in uh, in Imola, uh, the world, the, there are many many producers. This is one of them. This is uh, uh, Palazzona di Maggio, and uh, uh, this is a 2011. Uh, Colli di Imola uh, Rosso, and it's not a Sangiovese, because uh, in this wine uh, there are uh, uh, different uh, and uh, many uh, many uh, international grapes, so-called, in in fact French uh, grapes, and uh, we have uh, forty-five percent Merlot, forty-five Cabernet Franc, and ten Petit Verdot. So uh, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Petit Verdot uh, in this relation uh, can uh, uh, bring us uh, to Saint Emilion, probably, because uh, it's a blend uh, very, very uh, typical of Saint Emilion, and, and this is probably a little Saint Emilion in Romagna. <laughs> uh, why the international, uh, why the international uh, uh, grapes or the French, the Bordelais? grapes uh, because uh, there is a little tradition in uh, in some part of italy of this kind of uh, uh, so-called international in fact bordelais uh, varieties and uh, there is in tuscany there is in uh, in uh, friul uh, there is in uh, trentino there is in uh, in veneto and there is also in romagna and in emilia too because in colli bolognese there is a famous producer valania that produced a cabernet from the 60s uh, so, um, 60 years ago, it's not a, a, a fashion uh, uh, of the last years, of course. And in Colli di Imola uh, is uh, quite the same. And so there are some producers that, uh, that propose us uh, wine from uh, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Petit Verdot, Barrel Aged, of course. And you can, uh, this is the tra Dracone, Colli di Imola Rosso Riserva, 2011. Eh? Ecos, this is the wine. There is also the producer in contact. And uh, if you want to, to uh, say something, of course, you are free to do. Uh, the color is very different because uh, it's not Sangiovese or Merlot Cabernet Franc. So the, uh, the, the level of uh, anthocyanins is different from the Sangiovese wines. No? The nose is uh, uh, deeply spiced and uh, black berries uh, and, uh, and uh, black currants uh, and uh, some uh, raspberry, that is lampone, no? lampone okay. raspberry in the nose uh, and some tobacco probably. Hennings more than acidity because of the Cabernet, the Merlot and the Petit Verdot too, uh, because the, uh, the polyphenolic contains in uh, varietals like like varieties like uh, Merlot or Cabernet Franc and uh, Petit Verdot are more evident than uh, in Sangiovese normally. So the level of tannins are more evident. Uh, this is a wine that has uh, nine years of aging, not in barrels, of course, in barrels, in bottles, but uh, it's a wine that, uh, that had uh, nine years of aging. So Tannins like that means that can age for another 10 years, probably 15 years, at least. So it's a big wine. It's a big wine. Uh, it's uh, uh, like a Californian. Eh? Uh, it's uh, a Mediterranean international uh, and, uh, and uh, elegant in, uh, in its character. You have not to, to uh, imagine uh, the elegance or the crispiness of a Sangiovese, of course, but uh, it's not a heavy wine. It's a full-bodied wine, but the balance is not bad. And the aging was perfect because uh, the, the tannins is not drying, it's not aggressive. Uh, uh, the, 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 the tongue is not uh, in, in, uh, in trouble if you, if you taste this wine. And the persistence, the length of this wine uh, is fantastic. So uh, it's not a balance of a Saint Emilion, of course. It is different because uh, we are in, in Bordeaux, uh, the, the Atlantic weather is, is different, of course. But uh, it's uh, uh, 
some Mediterranean, uh, uh, little southern uh, uh, character, uh, with some international uh, expressions. And uh, this is probably the uh, the identikit, the, the uh, of, of a wine like that. There is a uh, Filippo Perdisa uh, in, in contact. I don't know if you want to say something about this wine, or if you go want to say in English. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, explain us what is Imola. Hi, uh, good afternoon, yeah. everyone. I'm uh, Filippo Perdisa of the Tunuta Palazzona di Maggio. And uh, our wine is uh, between, uh, um, is in the middle from Emilia and the Romagna country. Because uh, we are the northern uh, uh, winery in Romagna. Yeah. And um, why we use the Cabernet oh, Franc international yeah. grapes? Because uh, Sorry? You dominate the Silla River. Huh? The Silla River is, uh, is under your vineyard. Your vineyard. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, On the border between uh, Emilia and Romagna. Yes, yes. Uh, are in San Pietro the... is, is, uh, is Emilia and uh, Imola is Romagna. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> this is a very particular. Uh, is very particular. Uh, we use uh, international grape because uh, in um, uh, our our winers are composed with uh, uh, blue clays uh, and uh, yellow sands and uh, um, uh, red sands with ferrous uh, with ferrous and uh, we have a big acidity in uh, our winers. Uh, my grandpa my grandfather uh, he uh, he start uh, he started to um, study. Uh, these uh, international grapes uh, in our uh, uh, winery. But do you uh, do you produce Sangiovese too, or yes, only? yes, uh, yeah. we produce uh, uh, Sangiovese too, uh, Sangiovese Superiore and Sangiovese Superiore Riserva, uh, a special Riserva, uh, because uh, is a, is a, um, is a, is a Riserva uh, comes from one singular vineyards. Uh, the, to uh, the tallest uh, uh, vineyards in our uh, uh, in, in our winery uh, is on uh, 170 meters above sea level, and uh, in uh, this uh, in uh, this uh, winyards uh, we have uh, um, the the, th uh, the th three different uh, um, soil: uh, yellow sand. Uh, 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 ferrous sands and the blue clays, and uh, oh, uh, you have yellow and red soils because they yes, they yeah, red soil, soil, yes, iron in uh, in the soil, of course. Uh, yes, you have, uh, red and, soil. Uh, we, uh, uh, me and my my brothers, we continue uh, continued uh, to uh, the work of uh, uh, my grandfather uh, with international uh, um, grapes. Okay. Uh, oh, we use, uh, uh, we use uh, no uh, no barrick uh, but to know uh, oh, uh, many many great. years uh, new and old and uh, and that okay that's all okay I didn't may I say to... something sorry yes sorry I, I am the export manager of uh, Palazzona and I work with uh, with Philippe and the family since uh, more than three years. Uh, they, I want to add something about uh, Cabernet Franc and Merlot. Uh, it, it seems to be uh, not of the area, but uh, studying history already in uh, 1850, they, are, they were already there. So uh, people already uh, cultivating uh, uh, Cabernet Franc uh, uh, at that time. So as Filippo said, uh, the grandfather found uh, this, this grapes there. And the, uh, the, the place is amazing. In fact, uh, uh, the winery is working in organic and uh, without uh, difficulty because it is a, a, a wonderful area uh, uh, in the hills, and uh, um, the, the forest is over there, uh, and so it's very, uh, very easy to work uh, organically.
Fantastic. So uh, the uh, um, I didn't intend to repeat what uh, it's uh, uh, written in the, in these uh, uh, in these uh, publication of the Consortio Vini di Romagna, uh, because you can uh, find all uh, the information about soils, about the um, the, the, the sub denomination of the super denomination of the Romagna Sangiovese. And uh, there are many, uh, many soils, of course, uh, and uh, there are sandy, there are clay, there are, um, uh, full of irons, so red soils, uh, the lime, uh, uh, limestones, uh, and, and lots, very different. There is a, uh, the prevalence is clay, probably, uh, because there are many clay in, uh, in, uh, in the Romagna soil, but not only, of course, uh, as in all the, the, uh, the, the more important wine region of Italy and of the world, uh, of course. Uh, coming back to the international varietals in Italy, um, you, I, I want to, to, um, to, to tell you that uh, in the 16th century, Caterina dei Medici brought the Cabernet in Carmignano, and, uh, and uh, there are the, the uh, Duke Salvati in Migliarino, that is not far from Pisa, that had the Cabernet and the Merlot in, uh, in the vineyards uh, in the 17th century. So Cabernet, Merlot, and, uh, and uh, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon also, and Merlot, are in some uh, part of, of Italy uh, as the uh, noble choice. So the noble people choose the Cabernet and the Merlot to put the wine in the vineyards. Uh, 200 years ago, two centuries, three centuries ago. So it's not only a fashion of the last uh, 50, 30 years, it's not only super Tuscan, it's not only uh, some uh, fashion wines so are very popular. It's also uh, a, a noble tradition to, to, to put some kind of, uh, of varieties uh, in, in the vineyards. Because if you want to, to, to produce Cabernet, you have to uh, build a big cellar because Cabernet has to age. And so a, a simple farm has not the money to wait for uh, three, four, five years to have the right Cabernet, the, the balanced Cabernet. Uh, and uh, a, a normal, uh, normal uh, uh, wine makers in, uh, in, uh, in the 19th century uh, no? has not the money to buy the wood, the, the, the barrels to let age the wine. So they produce wines that can um, sell year by year normally, uh, in, in only in the area. If you want to uh, wait and do let for the wine age, you uh, have, to, uh, have, have to be rich. And the noble were, the nobles were rich. So the, the nobles uh, adopted the Cabernet uh, and uh, some, some, sometimes the Merlot for this reason, in Italy, not only in Italy, in Spain, uh, in some part of Spain is the same. And uh, nobles of rich people. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't met, uh, meet a, a, a single uh, uh, important winemaker in, uh, in California, in Napa Valley, that was not rich, for example. Jordan or, uh, or uh, Bilarlan, they, they are rich people. So, uh, and they, produce Cabernet, also because it's uh, easier to understand. So um, um, there is uh, a, a person that, that asked me to, to say something, and uh, uh, Nikki from uh, yeah. Nuove Bolle, uh, it's possible to, to have your, uh, your yeah, idea um, about Nuove Bolle, Nuove Bolle and the Bolle, the, the, the sparkling sure. one uh, with, with, with us. Uh, uh, and uh, we, we started with. Sure. Can you hear me first? Excuse me. Can you hear me? Yes, hear yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, guys. Uh, thank you, Daniele. Hello, everybody. I'm Nicole. Uh, sorry for my nickname here, which is Nikki. So that's why maybe it's not easy to, to understand. Um, thank you for, again, the introduction. I just wanted to add you um, 
something that it's uh, like um, a news, you know, from for Romania and started actually two years ago. Uh, when um, when we were appointed uh, to to manage, create, and develop Bole, that as Daniele explained, um, is the new actually type of sparkling wine that is related to a new uh, DOC. And uh, if you can look at the label, you can clearly see that there is a name here that states Nove Bolle. It's something that I just wanted to add as uh, the new the bubbles, no, no yes, the new bubbles that uh, actually come from the beginning of uh, the ninth and nineteenth century. Uh, actually, the story is inspired by foundings that we, in terms of R Romania people, uh, found uh, back in old uh, cellars. Uh, where actually farmers used to, to produce their own sparkling wine. So as uh, I think everybody here from, from the native people, from the Romania people, uh, know that we are like people that want to celebrate, that always have a glass of wine, and any excuse is a good wine, you know, to celebrate life in general. They say that, I'm in Piedmont today, but they say that it's, we are very festive all the time. So um, this, this is also the reason why that uh, the consortium decided to revamp or revit revitalize the story of the beginning of 19th century and create a new actually name uh, that belongs to the um, Romagna doc, so the denomination that is Nove, again, uh, going back to the last century and Bolle, of course, is, is Bubbles. So, okay. uh, but uh, as you know, there is a religion in Romania that is the Piadina. And the I Piadina, know, know, the Piadina uh, Romagnola yeah. is a, a real re religion with the squacquerone cheese and arugula. No? Yes. And uh, this is the best match you can, you can have uh, to, to, uh, to match the, 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 the Piadina. So Piadina yes. with, no, uh, with, with this kind of wine. With Volet, uh, but also with San Giovese. I think that Piadina puts everybody yeah, together, no matter what you are from, which dialect you are, hills, seaside, north or south. I think it's like a religion, as you said. My last thing, and then I'm, uh, I'm done, is as you said, uh, um, Daniele, this is a pure revolutionary and innovative project that comes from, again, two cooperatives that have two completely different, uh, actually. Very big uh, cooperatives. Huh? Yes, and they come, they come from two completely different segments of the market, sure. while for, with this kind of, of project, actually is for the first time that they, they started, is the unity of neither 100 um, growers, that together we have the chance of creating a small production and, and actually have a sort of uh, collaboration that stands for an everyday celebration. So this is what, uh, again, Piadina is a religion, but also the fact that we need a, a glass full of wine all the time. So I believe that uh, toasting with a bubble that comes from, a, from an area where hospitality and happiness okay. and joy is always in the mouth. So okay. again, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, my wife is uh, telling me, ah, we, we are too long. Uh, we, uh, one hour and 15 we only minutes. Have 10 minutes to go. 10, and 10, 10 minutes to go. I don't know if uh, the, the owner of Poderi Morini uh, wants to, to say something about this fantastic, simple, and, uh, and drinkable Sangiovese uh, Oriolo that is uh, one of the most drinkable Sangiovese we, we, we had in the tasting. Yeah, good, evening, good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, Daniele. Now, as you said, I mean, your description of the different soils of Emilia Romagna, uh, of course, uh, it's obvious that you can find different expressions of Sangiovese all around the, the region. And uh, um, I also appreciate your description of our wine when you said it's really fruity oh. because the combination of clay and yellow sands in uh, Oriolo de Fichi gives this wine a lot of fruitiness, but also some very delicate uh, spicy notes of cloves, as well as some uh, uh, rose petals. But at the same time, uh, you can actually taste this wine very fresh, given by the, by the sun, and very delicate. So um, we actually decided to, to introduce this wine to you because uh, we, we did not consider it our entry level. 
but it probably is more the most characteristic Sangiovese of our winery because it has no influence of oak, no influence of oblong maceration. Um, it, has, it shows these pristine fruits and actually it reveals the real character uh, and expression of our terroir. I see uh, also Raffaella Bissoni in contact. I don't know if, they, if she wants to comment something about the wine. Uh, yes. Sir. Uh, because uh, you, yeah. you, you, you yes, make, uh, a, a very good Sangiovese of the of the uh, um, upper part of the northern part. Bertinoro is very close to the Via Emilia, so uh, it's a, a very typical Sangiovese of this part of Romagna. Uh, yes, we we have uh, 2016 uh, uh, the yes. Romagna Sangiovese Superiore. Yes. Second. Uh, I am an, an organic uh, uh, certified uh, farmer and uh, all my wines are, 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 are of, of course organic certified, first of all. And uh, this part of Bertinoro is quite interesting uh, for the kind of terroir. terroir um, we have a, a clay sandy soil with a, a fossil uh, seashell. So okay. it's uh, interesting. Uh, uh, for for uh, for the wine, and um, I do a particular kind of uh, um, um, cultivation in the vineyard with uh, only wild grass, uh, with quite a lot of aromatic uh, wild plant, uh, and this uh, you can find this smell, this perfume, perfumes uh, in my wines too. I only um, do high uh, level. Uh, uh, wines uh, all uh, from uh, uh, slow production uh, and all my Sangiovese comes from uh, uh, clones, uh, a variety with uh, small berries. Uh, so they are very uh, thick and uh, uh, also with um, elegant tannins. Uh, I sell all my wines after two years minimum. So. Uh, um, they need a little bit of uh, more time uh, of aging due to this uh, interesting tannins. Uh, um, this uh, vintage 2016 was a very nice vintage. Of course, uh, uh, I, um, I uh, decided to present my reserva to uh, show you also uh, one kind of uh, our production and um, um, I hope uh, if you have question uh, on okay, this wine. I, I think it's very clear and uh, well exposed. So uh, can, I, can I ask something? Could each of these producers of these wines that we tasted, they're all very, very marvelous, complimenti tutti. Ah. But could you tell us how many cases you make of each of these wines? Uh, the Romagna wine army. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, yes, we, we are, um, yes, we are small producers, that's right. But uh, I noticed that uh, um, also importers, uh, uh, quality, import, uh, quality wine importers uh, don't buy big amount of, uh, of uh, uh, wines because they prefer to keep, to have uh, a higher portfolio, portfolio uh, with many wineries, uh, so uh, it's not so difficult for us to have our wines uh, in uh, many countries. Also, if uh, we are a small producer, Be um, for example, also me, I have. Uh, 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 excuse me, Raffaella Bissoni. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, we have to to, uh, to 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 stop the the. Uh, uh, yeah. the, 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 this, this tasting because uh, we have uh, uh, one hour and a half and so we are very close to one hour and a half so uh, well, and, uh, and it, it's uh, impossible to to go on for a long time thank you for your contribute and uh, I, I want to uh, say thank you uh, for your attention i hope that all the questions? wines from uh, from uh, we tasted uh, was uh, uh, I don't know per per performing. I think I think so. Uh, I don't know if you have some questions. Uh, 
If not, uh, my, my only question is: if you have questions, it's helpful okay. to know how, how much of each of these wide how many cases of bola do they make? How many cases? Yeah. Of Hi, do Robert. Yeah, I'm very quick. Yeah, very quick. We make only two wines: uh, one bianco and one rosé, only from Sangiovese. Uh, in total, we make around ten thousand cases by twelve. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Could I uh, jump Thank in you. and say, please, uh, if we could get an email with some of these details so we have a record and so we can keep in, uh, in touch with each other. Uh, what a, sure. a great thing. It would be a wonderful opportunity. Okay. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and Thank goodbye you. to you. Ciao. Un saluto a tutti. Ciao, Un saluto. Ciao, Nicola. Thank you. And, uh, Ciao. Everyone. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for enjoying Ciao, Ciao. Goodbye. Ciao. Ciao. Bye-bye. Buon Natale a tutti. Grazie.